Hi, my name is Rachel. Welcome back to my channel. That is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. Got back into the groove of work, and my reading dropped down. That's just to be expected. Also getting a little bit busier. We're starting to approach the time where my husband with his campaign is going to be taking up more of my time as well. But you're not here for that. <laughs> Jumping into the books that I finished and then are, am reading. And the first book I finished this week was my reread of Legends and Lantes by Travis Baldry. I read this last year and I really enjoyed it. It's a solid, cozy fantasy read. This is about an orc named Viv who decides she wants to stop adventuring, think like Dungeons and Dragons adventuring, and wants to set up a coffee shop. But in the city of Thune, the residents don't know what coffee is. So she slowly builds her business and then finds a home for herself. Again, it's cozy fantasy, not huge stakes, but the interplay between characters I love and this world is deeper, especially in the Pondry Read, I have noticed more of the world building and how deep and rich it is. And I'd love to see more in the city. Doesn't necessarily have to follow Viv and Tandry, but I'd like to see more of the city and different characters that we meet in this book. And upon reread, I actually like it more, like it went up a star for me. I then finished Who Gets the Drumstick by Helen Beardsley, which is also a reread, and this is one that I own. And this is the story that prompted the movies Yours, Mine, and Ours. If you look here, this is the Lucille Ball, Henry Fonda picture of the movie. I think this is closer to the book, but this book is a memoir written by Helen Beardsley as she talks about how her and then her husband Frank got together. Both of them had a spouse die and were trying to cope with being single parents and single parents of big families. She has eight children, he has ten. This was written in the 1960s, so before then People didn't mind having big families, especially as both of these families are Catholic. So, so she does talk about her journey with her first husband dying, of deciding to move her family to another state, and just the process of that's going on, and how she had no intention of remarrying. She went on dates because her siblings that she was living nearby was like, hey, you need to do some things for yourself. And ended up meeting Frank. Not actually through the dates that they were talking about. It's kind of cool how they met. And she really walks you through how her feelings were slow to blossom and to accept, hey, I can love this man and oh my, can I be a mother to this big of a family? So if you're a step-parent, which I am, so I can, this kind of resonates with me, just in that aspect, there are many things to consider. Now also, as I said, both of these families are Catholic and Helen does talk about her religious beliefs and how that has affected choices that she has made and how she sees the world. She's not preaching at the reader, but she is letting the reader know that this is one of her decision points or something that drives her decisions. And then after they get married and get together, we get to see some different family moments of life as people settle in with one another. And a big divergence between the book and the movie. In the book, the kids were very much for their parents remarrying. They, the parents talked to the kids, you know, got their support. While in the movie, both movies, the kids are not happy about it at all. But I think for movies, you needed that, like, hijink, that angst. Also, in the Henry Fonda movie, they aged kids up. In, in this one, only a few of them were teenagers. The majority were younger. So it's, it's something I really enjoy, especially as it gives a different view of families. And like I said, it resonates with me because I am a stepmom. So that is what I finished this week. Then on to what I am currently reading. 
I am still reading book two, The Chamber of Secrets. It's just kind of like my night easy read. I am still reading Light Blade by Zemil Akhtar. I'm about 46% into it and that is going to be my weekend focus because I need to get my rating score in on mon or by Monday so that we can get all the scores tabulated in and then have the finalists announced at the beginning of May because I need time to read the finalist books. I know that my group has been really talking about, is this really science fiction? Is this fantasy? Some of us are like, well, it's science fiction fantasy. For me, it really falls more into the science fiction cap because they have these stones that they can hook up to their bodies to help with healing or to help them become fighters or just to help them fall asleep so they can dream. I think where a lot of the terms progression fantasy come in is when they have the dream stone attached to themselves and their and their dreams. They it's like lucid dreaming. They can control what's going on. And they do, you know, this character likes to train, likes to learn skills in his dreams. And so for me, it's an interesting use of technology that's going on. So it falls more in the science fiction camp. This story has been more plot driven than character driven for me. There's some certain things that happen that has put the character in the situation he's in. And then I find that he's more reacting towards it. And then when he finally makes a decision, his motivations for it kind of seem suspect to me. So I'm not 100% certain how I feel about this book. But I am going to finish it because I want to know how it's going to end. And then I picked up The Mountain in the Sea by Ray Naylor. This is another nomination for the Nebulas. And I read the first few chapters and I've kind of bounced off of it. So I'm not completely DNFing it. I, it does have to go back to the library today, so I'm going to let it go back to the library and then put myself back on hold and try it again. Um, because just like Nettle and Bone, I first bounced off of it and gave it a week, and when I went back to it, I really enjoyed it. So it could just be like the type of things I'm reading right now, it, my mental capacity is full for this kind of type of sci-fi. I don't know. But right now, it's kind of seeming to be more environmental. It's near future we have an android and it seems to be linked to things of the sea the synopsis it talks about intelligent octo octopi so yeah that's kind of where i am on this one if you have read this i would love to know what you think because again like like i said i'm sending it back to the library today because it has to go back but then i'm going to request it again and I'm not quite sure how I'm feeling. Oh, except I do really enjoy all the descriptions of the culture in Vietnam. And then, as, since I wasn't sure about it, kind of flipping around, read a little bit about the bio of the author, and he has spent time in Vietnam. So it made sense more of the cultural references that are being made, which I, I really like that layer. Definitely finishing Light Blade this weekend. And then I am hoping to pick up Spear, which is another n nomination for the Nebulas this week. But I don't know what else I am going to be working on. I have a lot of books on my library shelf that I need to kind of whittle down. And then I also want to finish reading the novella category for the Nebula nominations. I have one left, and that's the online one. And then I want to read the no novelette category too at least get those two done before the nebulas happen, which, because I don't think that I will get this book back in time and have it read before the nebulas. But that's okay. It really is okay. I also need to put in my own ballot for the Hugos, because we are getting close to the end of the month. For my writing wrap-up, I have not actively been writing, but this week my creativity brain popped back on and a story that I had once kind of started working with characters. So I'm interested in these characters and trying the beginning of the story again. 
So I kind of went through like, just kind of first some scenes that I want to do. I don't want to overload myself and I know if I make an outline and start plotting, my brain no longer is interested. So I'm trying to keep it contained. But I'm hoping to start working a little bit on writing that this weekend to get back in the flow of writing. And for other media, still working on my watching of Midsummer Murders. I mean, those episodes are like an hour and a half long, so usually one a night kind of thing. Also, been watching more civic meetings, partially because my husband is running for office, but it's always interesting to know what's going on in your local area. And I've been watching the school board meetings. I've been watching some boundary committee meetings for the school elementary school systems just because they've had some school closures. Curious to see how things are going to work out. I mean, honestly, if you're needing some reality TV, watch your civic meetings. That's all the reality TV you need, I promise. <laughs> So things coming up in the future, I think probably with my weekly wrap up next time, I will have my May of Moderns TBR, which is run by Margaret Pinard, and my Queens of Chaos TBR, which has four people in it, but the channel I follow mostly is Somber Honey Books, and I am looking to be on the Sky team because those prompts seem to fit more what I'm probably going to pick up anyway. So yeah, that is what I have kind of planned in the future. Well, and then once I finish Light Blade, I will do a review video for that as well. Hope you guys are having a good April, and I will see you next week. <laughs>